Now my daughter made this for me. Isn't that cool? Thanks for joining us. This is our homemade five gallon pail mosquito trap. Let's build one together. To get started, let's talk about what we're gonna need. This is three five gallon pails. The style you can get at almost any home improvement store. I'm gonna use white, blue, and white because I think it'll make it easier for you to follow along in the video as we build it together. On top, we've got a regular snap-on style pail lid. We need just one. Nothing special, nothing fancy, just the style that snaps on the lid. In addition to that, we're gonna want a black light. This is an incandescent bulb. It happens to be 60 watts. We don't want an LED bulb because we want this to emit a little bit of heat in addition to that ultraviolet light it's gonna produce. We've got ourselves a really inexpensive extension cord. We're gonna use as the cord for the lamp base that holds the light. We've got a lamp base, which is a white plastic lamp base. The light bulb screws into it, and this is what you're gonna see in the ceiling of most basements. Almost any hardware store is gonna carry screen door mesh, or the type of mesh you're gonna see in the windows around your house. This happens to be aluminum. I like the aluminum over the fiberglass because I think it lasts longer and it's easier to work with. They cut it off a roll at the store so you can get just what you need. The most important piece of this project is gonna be a nine inch high velocity fan. Now I bought this from Walmart and I bought this one specifically because if you didn't know it, it fits exactly inside of one of those pails. Now these pails being your standard five gallon buckets cost me about $2 a piece. The lid was about $1.80, so altogether I've got about $8. The lamp costs us about $4. It's a 60 watt GE incandescent black light. To emit those ultraviolet rays, we're gonna to want to attract mosquitoes. Our extension cord was under $2, six foot, 16 gauge. The cheapest thing I could find, we're just gonna clip the head off of it anyways. This lamp base cost me about $2. It's a keyless ceiling lamp holder. If you have a basement and you've got lights on the ceiling, if it's unfinished, it's probably gonna look like that. The mesh cost me about $6. And being the aluminum, it was a little bit more expensive than the fiberglass equivalent. I prefer the aluminum because it's easier for me to work with. And our fan costs us about $16 from Walmart. Nine inch high velocity fan. What's important is that we get this fan specifically because the diameter of its cage fits exactly inside of our pail. Everything I have sitting on the table here cost me about $38, which we're gonna use some hot glue and a couple of screws, but in general, conservatively, this project should cost you about $40. Now we're gonna break our project down into three parts represented by the three pails that we're gonna use in the construction of the mosquito trap, the top, the middle, and the bottom. Let's get started with the top. Now starting with our top pail, we're gonna take the lid off and set it aside. We've drawn a line that goes all the way around the pail, four inches down from the bottom of this ridge. We're gonna cut that off first. just the top of the pail. As you can see, we've also drawn four different columns, as we're gonna call it, which we're gonna leave on the pail. What we'll wanna do is remove four windows from this top bucket. Four inches down, six and a half inches wide. Each of the columns that we wanna leave are two inches wide. with our top pail essentially having four legs that we're gonna to use to support it on top of the middle pail. As you can see, I've also drawn a dotted line one inch up from the bottom on each of the legs. That's gonna help us position it later as we go ahead and mount it 
onto the middle pail. Next, we're gonna get our lamp base ready. We're gonna take our extension cord, we're gonna pull it out, snip the head off, and wire it in the lamp base. When you clip the head off the extension cord, you're left with two wires. Strip those wires, twist them, and we're gonna mount these right to the underside of the lamp base. With our lamp base wired up, I like to cut a little divot out of the edge of it to allow the wires to pass when we mount it to the top. Now we've got a way for our wires to pass through the lamp base. Now for our pail lid, we're going to go ahead and mount our lamp base to the underside. In order to do that, we're going to have to drill two holes three and a half inches apart. Now I'm going to mount this using some three quarter inch long 830 seconds bolts that I had in the shop. In order to do that, I'm going to pass the bolts from the top of the lid through to the underside, bolting the lamp base into place. hot glue to keep things from vibrating apart. I like to apply a little hot glue to the top side to keep water from getting through to our lamp. We'll let that cool. Our lamp base is cooled off. The hot glue is holding the nuts in place and it's keeping water from being able to get through the top side. We're gonna go ahead and assemble it to our other top pail. This is gonna snap into place. And now completed, we've got a lamp base mounted to the inside of our top pail. The top pail has four legs, as you can see, and we're gonna eventually mount this to the middle pail. Let's move on to that next. Now the first step for our middle pail is we're gonna to wanna to remove the handle. It's nice to not damage it because we might want an extra later on in the project. They can be a bit tricky. Set this aside and save it for later. The next thing about the middle pail is we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and strike a line two inches down from the top of this ridge. That line being two inches down, we're gonna cut all the way around the pail. section and this is going to house our fan. So let's get that out next. Now we don't need the base for the fan nor do we need the front guard so we're going to disassemble it. What's important is I want to save the two screws that hold the fan to its base. We're going to use these two screws to hold it into our pail. The rest of the screws that hold the front of the guard on, we can dispose of. Now I'm gonna remove the front of the guard. Now it's important that we don't damage the fan blades. These are made of aluminum and they're relatively delicate. Normally they're protected by the guard, which we don't need. Now grabbing our pail, you're gonna notice there's two holes where the handle was mounted. We're gonna utilize those two holes as our location to mount the fan. What we need to do first though is drill a hole all the way through the bucket. 
so we can put the fastener through the bucket. Now I used a 1 8 inch drill bit because these fasteners are pretty tiny. In order to be able to install the fasteners, we're gonna to have to pass them through the outer plastic so that they stop on the pail. Now our fan is gonna rest right inside of this bucket. It's the right diameter so that it fits snugly in the pail. Now taking a look inside the bucket, you can see our fastener coming through the hole we just drilled. Now the fan fits relatively snugly in here and you can see the mounting bracket we need to connect that screw to. It's a little tricky, you just gotta line them up and then tighten the screws down. Now with both of those screws tightened down, the fan is relatively well mounted. It still has a little bit of wiggle, so I'm going to use a dab of hot glue on each side to go ahead and secure it. Now I want to take a quick second to point out that this is where the fan control is. The switch is currently on off, and we can move it to high, medium, and low simply by turning the selector. Now with your fan installed in the middle pail and your top assembly completed, it's time to make the two together. If you recall me talking about a one inch tall line that we had placed on the legs of the top pail, now is the time to use it. We're simply gonna go ahead and install our top pail into the middle pail with all of the legs on the inside. Now the height of that line is exactly where we wanna position the top pail. Now there's a whole lot of ways you can mount these legs between the two pails. You can use screws, you can use bolts. I wouldn't recommend glue, but what I'm gonna to use today are popper bits. Why? Because they're cheap, I have them, and they're easy for me to use. There's no particular orientation that this has to be assembled to, although it is convenient when your cords come out the back in the same location. completed, our top is mounted to our middle pail. The light is inside and the fan is mounted and this is now one unit that does not come apart. This will be installed in our bottom pail, which is up next. Now I want to review the bottom pail's layout as it seems like it's the most complicated but it's actually not. We're going to cut three windows out of the pail and they're all the same size and they're all equally spaced. They're nine inches wide by 10 and a quarter inches tall. The bottom of that opening is one and a half inches from the bottom of the pail, and they butt up against the top right up there underneath that ledge. The supports that'll be left when we're done are two inches wide. Three openings, three supports. On the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut a circle out. We're gonna leave one inch of material all the way around the outer edge. As you can see, I like to use a step bit to get a starter hole, and I like to use it to cut a nice round edge in the corner of each window I'm cutting out. It allows me to stick the jigsaw in the hole and cut through the pattern without having to start and dive the blade in. It also creates a nice radius on the corner of the cuts. With that 
being said, three windows all cut through the tail and the bottom cut out as well. It's time to get to our mesh. Now to lay out our mesh, I like to keep things simple. We know the dimensions of the holes that we cut in the size of the pail, and we could use those dimensions to cut the mesh as well. We could also lay it out with a ruler, cut the squares. I prefer to just use the pieces I cut out as a pattern, leaving about a half of an inch all the way around when I trace it. It works really well for the bottom too. Proximate size is just fine. Remember, we want the mesh to overlap on the pail so we have something to glue to. So it's kind of rough cuts. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you have a little bit of extra, it's okay. You could always trim it off if you really got too much. There's also a lot of ways to cut this stuff. I'm gonna go a little overkill using some tin snips. Why? Because I like to save the scissors and not ruin them with the aluminum mesh. And the tin snips work pretty well. I have them, why not use them? Now the edges of this stuff can be pokey, so be careful. It is aluminum wire enough. It's not too bad, but you want to use caution anytime you're working with metal. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue this into our pail. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue the mesh on the bottom first. The pieces of mesh should just fall right in. And as you can see, we have an overlap all the way around. I'm going to use the hot glue right around the edge and hot glue being what it is, it's going to melt and get through the mesh and it's going to hold it to the pail. After I'm done with the bottom, I'm gonna work my way around the edges of one panel, then the next, and then the last one. Now it's important to hold it while the hot glue dries. The mesh likes to move a little bit, especially with the curl it has for being in a roll. If you don't let certain areas cool off before you try to finish gluing it, for one, usually you run out of hot glue, and two, it'll pull apart. This bottom piece of mesh has been secured all the way around the edge. Now, rather than sit around and wait for glue to cool off, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do one panel and I'll show you what it looks like. the entirety of our bottom pail, the bottom pail is almost complete. We just have to work on the handle. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove this white plastic piece. Sometimes it's easier to crunch it, sometimes it's easier to cut it, kind of depends on who makes your pail. All right. With the handle removed, I'm gonna go ahead and nip this right in the middle. I've got a pair of heavy lineman's pliers that have essentially a nipper on the inside. 
We're just gonna go ahead and snip this right in the middle. With our two handle pieces now having been cut, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna straighten these out as best we can. We wanna leave this little divot that we have in the bottom and we wanna leave the kink in the straight piece on top. We just need to make the middle portion as flat as possible. Now with these two straight, we're ready to go ahead and turn them into latches. In order to do that, we're gonna need the head unit. Now because every head unit and every pail is gonna be a little bit different, after all, it's your project, not mine, we have to custom size our latches to fit the assembly. What we want to do is line up the holes in our lower pail, the holes for the handles, with the actual handle on our head unit. Push them together snugly, and now we've got the proper orientation to turn our handle into a latch. And because each assembly is a little bit different, we're gonna wanna go ahead and hold up our latch and our handle from the head unit we're gonna to wanna to mark where we need to bend the latch. If you snug your assembly together, you should be able to mark exactly the height of this upper pail handle. We wanna mark just above it, and we're gonna bend our latch forward to fold over the handle. We'll do this for both sides. If you held this on the table, you'd notice that the little twist at the end that locks into the pail can stick upwards off the table. We want to bend our latch in that same direction. These two should be virtually parallel once we've bent the latch into place. It helps to have a good heavy pair of pliers to do this because you're bending metal after all. I like to bend it just a little bit past center so it actually comes down at a slight angle and then that allows me to go ahead and bend it back just a smidge to make it lock over center when we lock to the other handle. When all is said and done we've got our tab that locks into the pail facing up off the table and we've got our latch protruding up almost parallel and then we've twisted it off to the side so we can work it through with ease. We'll repeat this for the other one. Now these can take some tweaking and it takes a couple tries sometimes to get it just right. The reason why we said it's a good idea to hold on to that extra handle from earlier is because you may not get it on the first time. And sometimes after you bend it a few times, it'll break. Don't worry, grab that other handle, cut it in half and give it another shot. Now with our latches bent, we're gonna go ahead and install them in the bottom. And as you can see, the geometry allows it to be just a little bit snug. So we're gonna hold up our upper handle and we're gonna snap it in place. It's gonna lock it. Same thing for the other side. Slide it past, lock it in place. We've got an assembled unit. About it. You've got your top, middle, bottom pail all assembled together with the latches. The only thing we have left to do is to install our light bulb. Reach in, twist it into the lamp base, and all we have to do is plug it in. If you've made it this far, you've got a homemade mosquito trap. Now, if you're like me and it's pretty obvious that this whole thing is not your forte, filming yourself, talking to the back of a camera, you've got a regular daytime job, 
but you find inspiration in watching other people build their projects and you also find inspiration in sharing your own, please hit like and subscribe. It would be much, much appreciated. I forgot to mention, if you've got a really big mosquito problem, stay tuned. We're working on a really big solution. I've decided to introduce you to all of the animals that have interrupted me while trying to film this. This is Shuru the duck. Shuru likes to wait until you've collected your thoughts and have been successfully recording for a few minutes. Then she lets out a couple quacks right at the end. This is Willie the rooster. When Willie went to rooster school, he failed the part where they taught him to cock-a-doodle-doo only in the morning. He likes to cock-a-doodle-doo all the time. He can hear it all the time. This is Pepe the kitten. Pepe thinks that all camera tripods are toys. He likes to try to climb them. He likes to knock cameras over. You are a ball of Pepe. Luna, are you scared of the mosquito trap? It's not for trapping puppies. There's nothing to be worried about. This is how you hold an iPhone into a tripod if you don't have any of that fancy camera equipment. And this is how you take over your wife's mudroom so that the sound isn't as echoey. You start hanging blankets to try to make the film a little bit better. Fancy, fancy, I know. 